Hey friends and family, my name is Veronica. Thanks for joining me for my daily scent and makeup of the day video upload. We're getting ready to run out of the door for an appointment outside of the house today and we gotta get going early. So today I wanna show you what I do about my scents and my makeup when I'm in a rush. And so I'd like to go for something that is soft uh, and feminine, but non-offensive, something that doesn't have huge projection, won't fill up a whole room since we're going to be in um, doctor's offices in the morning. I want something simple but nice. And so I'm going to go with one that I recently blind purchased and have been playing around with a little bit. And that is a white floral, Ellie Saab, Essence Number no. 9 Tuberose. This is a fragrance created by Francis Kirk Dijon, uh, the same person that created Baccarat Rouge 540 um, and a number of other very, very popular high-end uh, niche fragrances. Um, this is a simple floral structure and it's soft. But let me talk about the bottle first. There's something to be said about a beautiful, simple bottle like this. Sometimes when I see people do reviews and they, they go crazy over these sort of linear bottles, I think, well, what's so special about that, you know, compared to something fun and funky like this? The idea is that, um, and, and I get it, the idea is when you have it in your hand, it has a presence, it's a heavy bottle, um, it, the lines are actually just classic and simple and refined. And I think that's what makes this a, a nice bottle. It's elegant in its presentation. The notes in here are tuberose, cinnamon, bergamot, and white musk, at least according to Fragrantica. Those are the only four notes in here. It's not even in a pyramid structure. They're just sitting in one line. And I will say that it is a simple fragrance um, in, in that sense, in that you do get all of those notes almost all at once throughout the entire life of the perfume. I would say the tuberose and the bergamot come out, come forward, and then the cinnamon and the musk are sort of in the background, helping to add just a, a hint of complexity. I've been on this big tuberose kick lately. And so you see, I have a lot of tuberose fragrances like this uh, private collection from Estee Lauder, tuberose gardenia. I have Michael by Michael Kors. I have Truth or Dare. Um, from Madonna, I have Fracas, I have a bunch of other tuberose based fragrances. It is a note that really sort of speaks to my heart. I find it beautiful and feminine and round, rich and round without being um, obtrusive and in your face. Although some of the fragrances, the way tuberose presents in some fragrances can be really sort of loud and forward. In this presentation, it is a very subtle, ladylike, delicate um, presentation. I will say about this fragrance, it's one of those, if you stick your nose right in it, like where you sprayed it on your arm or whatever, it can feel a little bit synthetic to the nose. And so, my advice would be, don't do that. <laughs> Enjoy it sort of in the bubble, the scent bubble that it creates around you. It's one of those that's lovely as it wafts up. But you know what I mean? There's some sense that if you get right up on it with your nose, there's something in it you pick up that just is a little bit different or off or, you know, keeps you wondering this is one that I would say just spray it on and enjoy how it all sort of mixes together and wafts up into the air around you. It is a beautiful, light, lovely fragrance that I think will uh, be very appropriate for the medical setting that we have to be in this morning. Let's go check out what I did for the makeup of the day, which is fairly simple so that we can get out of the house. I always think of so much more to say about the fragrance of the day after I come over here and start recording my makeup. But about that Ellie Saab tuberose, it's one that you can very comfortably overspray. It's not going to overpower your, your body, your sort of bubble around you, the people around you. It's a soft feminine fragrance. So it's one that I have definitely oversprayed today with no regrets and I think I will be just fine. 
So makeup of the day, I know this looks like a lot of products for someone who's rushing out of the house, but I was able to apply these fairly quickly today. I needed some extra moisture because I did something that I never do. That's not true. I do it maybe once or twice a year, and that is I fall asleep in my makeup because I'm so tired. So that happened last night. So I woke up with a fairly dry face that needed some heavy washing and some heavy moisture. So I went in with my moisturizer and then did a little bit of facial oil in certain spots, like right under my um, eyes, where I would put concealer just to give it some extra uh, moisture, like an extra moisture hit. But I also then went in with this Lancome uh, UV Expert Aqua Gel Defense 50 sunscreen, and the name goes on and on. But the, the idea about this is that it's an all-in-one primer. It has moisturizer in it too, and it does well for that. Of course, I did my typical under eye um, filler with the Becca Anti-Fatigue Primer that helps to fill in the lines. I quickly went in, what, what I wanna get at with this whole setup today for trying to get out of the house quickly is to go to the products that you know are going to perform well. They're gonna be easy to apply. You're very familiar with applying them and you can just kind of throw them on super quick and not have any issues, not have to go back in and fix anything. And you know you're gonna get a reliably nice look. So the Milani Conceal and Perfect uh, Longwear Concealer is one of those products for me in terms of a, a, a concealer that I can use under my eyes and then a couple of other spots on my face. This is in the color Pure Beige. It goes on so nicely. It's a, it's a thick formula, but it's thin enough that you can spread it out with your finger. I usually will just tap it out with my ring finger all over under my eyes and the other little areas that I have and it. It performs well through the day. I then also used an old favorite that is reliable in terms of taking me through the day and staying put and easy application for my foundation. And that's the L'Oreal Infallible 24, 24 hour fresh wear foundation. I have mine in the color 480. I have several colors. This is Radiant Sand 480. Because I did a little bit of self tanning um, yesterday, I did uh, want to go in with something a little bit more directly medium, which is what this is. This is a gorgeous foundation. I use it with a damp uh, sponge to, app to apply it. I use a damp sponge to apply it and it goes on just always flawless, reliable, nice medium coverage. Yes, you can put an extra layer on for full coverage if you like, or you can sheer it out a little bit with like a moisturizer if you just wanna have kind of like a tinted moisturizer, you know, cream sort of foundation look on. Really good product for when you're in a rush. I also uh, used the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Powder in Medium Golden just to dab on the oily areas of my face to make sure everything stayed put. Went in with a reliable bronzer. That is key for a day, at least for me. When I'm rushing out of the house, my best bet is to throw my hair up in a ponytail and go for like a really sort of bronzy look on my face. It never fails. For me, you have to figure out what works for you. Is it like, you know, just a quick pink-based look? Is it a gray look? What is it that always looks good on you and you know you're, you're gonna be able to pull off really quickly? So this is called Bronzing Act. It's the matte uh, bronzer in dark from Pure. Great bronzer, really easy to apply. I know it looks really dark in the pan, but it doesn't come off that dark on the skin, although it is on the darker side. There's a light one that I have too for days that I have not self tan. So I went in pretty heavy with this on my cheeks and around the perimeter of my face to sort of frame my face, especially since I have a ponytail today. I don't wanna have a big egg head. Y'all know what I'm talking about, a big fat face <laughs> in front of that ponytail. I needed to give a little bit of dimension and definition and sculpt to my face. So that was that. For my eyeshadow, I use this palette. It is the Hanging in Hawaii uh, palette from BH Cosmetics. It's a less expensive <clears throat> palette. If you're not familiar with BH Cosmetics, they make pretty good palettes at reasonable prices. It's sort of like in the color pop world, if you will. I'm not the craziest about the BH Cosmetic formula. In fact, I have given away a lot of pa palettes 
excuse me, that other people have raved and raved and raved about from BH Cosmetics, like the Desert Oasis. <clears throat> I did like the palette. I just, I had some trouble with some of the colors and found it rather repetitive and kind of hard to work with overall. But anyway, it's a, they tend to have more powdery formulas. Their shimmers are really fun to work with, but I do find them a little clunky and chunky in comparison to some of the um, more luxury brands like your Natasha Denona's and your Pat McGrath's and so forth. But it's fine. This is a great vacation palette. It's got some nice cool tones. It's got warmer tones. It's got these fun, funny, try that again, Veronica. It's got these fun pink colors here. And then a variety of shimmers to play with and a few colors to deepen up. I don't find that like the Honolulu, for example, performs really well and does what I want it to in terms of deepening up a look. It kind of muddies up the look. But at, a, at the price tag that this was, I think I paid nine bucks for this on sale or something. It's fine and I would definitely take it on vacation um, for some easy, reliable looks. So I went in this row today. I used like Shaka all over the, the eye, um, <clears throat> the crease, the, the eye lid. Uh, etc up to near, nearly up to the brow bone i went in with coconut in the crease to sort of blow that out and give it some dimension and then use mahalo in the deepest part of my crease and out in the outer v i did try to go in with honolulu to add some more depth in the outer v and use it as a eyeliner and it just wasn't the best performer but i made it work i did waikiki really quickly on the um the lid the center of the lid and then used hula on the inner corner. I know that sounds like a whole lot, but it was really easy to do and quick, except for working with Honolulu. You know, my point is that when I'm rushing, I want to do probably a bronzy, brown, uh, warm color look because I know that it's going to work for my skin tone, my eye color, the shape of my eyes. I already know how to do it. So that's the idea to go in super quick. This is not one that I pull out often. I kind of have it in a drawer with some other <clears throat> eyeshadow palettes that I have set to the side, like some of the ColourPop ones and so forth that I would take on vacation. It's not in the drawer with the shadows that I reach for the most because I don't, it's, it's okay. It's okay to like. It's not in the love category for sure. Anyway, I used the Becca Moonstone, this little cute mini um, highlighter for uh, right under the brow bone on the top parts of my cheeks and on the bridge of my nose. Not the tip of my nose, just the, the sort of bridge, like right between the eyes. A little dab there does something for um, adding some dimension to the face. Went in on my um, eyelashes with, what did I do with my mascara? I think it ran away. <laughs> I used a the CoverGirl Exhibitionist mascara, which decided it didn't want to hang out at the party anymore and it went back home. But uh, Precisely My Brow Pencil 3.5 on the eyebrows to give it some, to fill in some of the more sparse areas. And then I also hit the eyebrows with a tinted brow mascara from NYX in the color brunette just to add some dimension i find that when i have a ponytail on my hair making sure that my eyebrows have some dimension and sculpt to them really does help to define the face at least for me everybody's face is different so you have to do what works for you of course nars um, orgasm on the cheeks this is a reliable color that i know will work well with any eyeshadow look any eyeshadow look od but a goodie has a little bit of shimmer and then on the lips i use one of my very favorite lipsticks and my tip for the the lip look if you're rushing out of the door is one of two things either go super light with maybe just like a lip gloss you know and like a natural uh, uh, your lips but better kind of color like a deeper pink or a mauvey color or something like that or do something dramatic and let that be the star of the show, especially if you have a ponytail on for your hair. Um, just do the lips in a darker color. So I went in with this raw chocolate, which is a matte color from Maybelline. And it looks disgusting. I'm almost embarrassed to show this to you all. But it is a really beautiful brown color. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I also used a dark lip liner then to add a little bit of drama to the lips. If you would like to see the finished look, I welcome you to um, meet me over on Instagram. I'm at Veronica Says 
all. Veronica says all, like the name of my channel here, except with the word all on the end and smushed together. Veronica says all. Come join um, Instagram and um, we'll have fun together, checking out each other's looks, our sense of the day and so forth. And then I finished off with the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury, which is hairspray for your face, my friends. You can spray this on and literally feel it setting things in, like locking it in for the day. I'm a believer. I know a lot of people don't uh, believe in setting spray or in primer. I am a believer. I think they help me. It's all about you and your skin and how it behaves with products. So that's my quick look of the day. I got my little ponytail going on my friends. I got my little bronzy look in the eye and I have my dramatic lip to take me through the day and no one will know that you didn't spend, you know, an hour doing all your makeup. Hope y'all have a wonderful, productive, blessed day. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this and please uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already so that we can hang out and talk about all of our favorite products. Have a wonderful one.